Hello to everyone. Today I want us to look at figure 2.5 which shows a drainage basin from source to mouth and its corresponding longitudinal profile. Alright, so this is our figure 2.5 as illustrated below. Um, it is illustrated as in the form of a drainage basin as you can see of our tributaries, the source up there, the um, mainstream. The direction of the flow is moving downwards, okay? So moving downwards until the sea, as you can see down there. Okay, assume that you have our upper course, our middle course, and our lower course. The mouth there, as you can see. And the longitudinal profile, you can see that the height above sea level and the length of the of the river until the mouth. Okay, so basically this is the very same thing as that one, okay? Yes. So I mean that there's erosion zone, more erosion there, transition zone, and then more of transportation is more of erosion also, and deposition in the lower course, as you can see. All right, as you can see, also the shape it's very important to to notice or to be aware of the shape of the longitudinal profile shown there. Gents, ladies and gents, let's uh, answer the questions now. All right, so two. 5.1 says define the term drainage basin so a drainage let's define drainage basin it's easy straightforward guys even it's one mic so a drainage basin is an area that is drained by the river and its tributaries so I mean that this is a drainage basin that so as you can see this square shape here let's say this um, let's assume this uh, this is a land or it's an area so if it's an area, so you can clearly see that this area consists of tributaries in the river, which drains this particular area. So a drainage basin is an area that is drained by the river and its tributaries. I hope you understand. Let's move on to point five point two. The following questions refer to, so that's going to be one mark. So 2.5.2, the following questions refer to drainage density. Um, a says what is drainage density so drainage density is the total length of you can clearly see you can just say it's a total length of the river per kilometer square okay yes so it's a total length of a river per kilometer square so mean that a drainage basin can have high drainage density or a low drainage Density meaning that if it has low drainage density, it has um, shorter, shorter river. So I mean that the river is shorter, the tributaries are shorter. I mean that the area that is being drained is is is, is just a small scale area. But if we're talking about high drainage density, I mean that we have many tributaries, we have longer tributaries. I mean that um, in, in in, in 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 land okay yes so that is why i just said drainage density so drainage density is the total length of the river per kilometer square all right let's move to b so b so that's going to be one so b um state one factor that influences drainage density so we have to state one factor that influences drainage density so one factor that influences um, drainage density is the number of tributaries, okay? Yes, the number of tributaries that are found there, okay? And as well as I've explained it, okay? Yes, the number of tributaries, as you can see there, the tributaries there, okay? Yes, so the number of tributaries um, plays a, a, a major role in the drainage or in the influence of a drainage density tributaries on the number of tributaries or the length of tributaries etc c give evidence from the diagram to indicate that the upper course has the highest drainage density so the upper course so this this is the upper course guys let me just draw red there the line there red and another line red there so look you can place it that is divided into three parts okay one two three this is the upper course middle course lower course what's the question says the question says give evidence for the diagram to indicate that the upper course 
has the highest range density. Why we assume that the upper course has the highest range density? It's easy to see, guys. It's it's clear that we have many tributaries there that are connecting to to the mainstream. It's because of tributaries, many tributaries, okay, or many primary tributaries or first order tributaries. All right, let's move to two point five point three. Okay, I'm just going to get a two marks. So the following questions refer to longitudinal profile. So A says, what evidence indicates that it is a graded profile? Why you can say that this longitudinal profile of the river displayed here is um, graded profile? It's because of the concave shape, guys. You can clearly see the concave shape. It's the concave shape. When you see a concave shape, that basically means that the river is well graded or you can clearly or you can just simply say that there are no rapids and waterfalls so mean that there are just no rapids and waterfalls mean that is not uneven okay that's it let's move on to b so b says use figure 2.5 in a paragraph of approximately eight lines explain how a river maintains its graded longitudinal profile so look how a river maintains its graded this concave shape how does it um, maintains this concave shape or this graded profile the very first thing is that mean that the erosion that took place is in balance with the what with the deposition that's it i hope you understand that so mean that the eroded material has been has been transported okay yes until the the lower course okay that's how it goes so mean that there are no eroded material that are left that are left um over in these areas in the upper course or in the in the middle course so mean that all of that eroded material has been transported until it reaches the lower course that's it so mean that there's a balance between the erosion as well as the deposition let's move on you can also say that it has enough energy to carry the eroded material so meaning that the water inside the river or the discharge has much amount of of energy or enough energy to to carry this eroded material to carry this eroded material to push them away until they reach the deposition or until they reach um, the, the lower course. You can also say that the downward erosion creates the steeper gradient in the upper course. Okay, yes. So I mean that there is downward erosion here that takes place. Okay, yes, that takes place. So that that is why we have a steep gradient here, as you can see. So as we have as, as we shown the steep gradient here that basically means that there is more of of vertical erosion that is taking place there okay yes or downward erosion all right let's move on so also let's talk about the middle course right now let's just give a point in the middle course so in the middle course with a number of tributaries there is sufficient water to carry the medium sized particles so in the middle course there is more of responsibility of transportation you should know that so if let's say for example if the middle course wasn't able to transport these materials or this eroded material that basically means that the profile was not going to be graded or the maintenance was going to be lost so since now the middle course has this um uh, this supply from the from its tributaries because it's being endowed with many tributaries okay or it's been characterized with with many tributaries let's say okay yes so mean that there will be there will be more or there will be sufficient water to to transport the eroded material so that it can also be clear until the until the um until the lower course and that's it and i think that's the end of our revision have a great day chance thank you so much don't forget to subscribe guys bye